Summary of So Long a Letter by Mariam Aba. Ramatalai, a Senegalese lady who lives in Dakar, the capital of the country, makes the decision to write a letter to her longtime friend Isatu, who is in the United States of America. The letter is about Madhu's sudden death, who was married to Ramatalai, but they were no longer together. According to Muslim tradition, Ramatalai has to go through a morass, which is 40 days of being alone and grief. She keeps a notebook during this time, which she plans to send to Isatu at some point. Ramatalai starts by thinking about how long Madhu's funeral took after he died. Traditional Senegalese Muslim traditions say that Ramatalai should open her home to all the mourners and well-wishers and give them food and drink. Ramatalai thinks this is very unfair because Madhu didn't want anything to do with her in his last years. People who are sad about her death almost completely empty her house. They bring gifts, mostly cash, but most of them end up in the hands of Bintu, Madhu's second wife, and her greedy mother, who is known as Lady Mother-in-Law. After this, Ramatalai thinks about her marriage to Madhu. He stopped being interested in her, and she has no idea why. As young lovers and then as newlyweds, their first years together seemed full of hope. Ramtalai's family didn't want them to get married because they thought Madhu was a bit of a loaf. In her diary, she says that they were right and asks why, despite being smart, she picked him over Dauda Dieng, who is older, more established, and financially stable. Like Ramatalai's, Isatu's marriage fell apart. Isatu married Madhu, a medical student and good person, around the same time that Ramatalai married Madhu. They were very much in love. Madhu, on the other hand, comes from a wealthy family, while Isatu is just the daughter of a jeweler. The union was not approved by Mato's family, especially his mother, Auntie Nabu. In order to hurt the marriage, Auntie Nabu went to the village of her ancestors and persuaded her brother to give her care of one of his girls, who was named after her. Auntie Nabu then fed and groomed little Nabu. Uncle Nabu then begged Mato to marry young Nabu as his second wife when the girl was old enough. Mato agreed because he was afraid that if he didn't, his mother would get upset and get sick. He told Isatu that he didn't love Nabu because she was too young, and that he had kids with her. This was too much for Isatu to handle, so she left him. She worked hard at school, got a degree in diplomacy, and then went to the United States to work in the Senegalese mission. At the same time, Ramatalai was having problems with her own marriage. A girl named Binta became friends with her daughter Daba. A guy in his 40s or 50s who bought Binta clothes was often called her sugar daddy. Following some time, Binta's family started to push her to quit school and marry the man for his money. Binta agreed, but not easily. This news made Ramatalai sad, but it didn't make him suspicious in any other way. A few days later, Mato, Madhu's brother Tamsir, and an imam from the area showed up at Ramatalai's house. They told her that Bintu's sugar daddy was actually Madhu, Ramatalai's husband, and that Bintu would soon be married to Madhu. Ramatalai was upset and felt like he had been left behind as Madhu started a new life with Bintu. Despite this, she chose to stay married to Madhu and accepted her fate as if it were a job. Even though her kids complained, she stuck to her decision. Now that Madhu has died, Ramatalai has to deal with the strange situation of having to grieve for a guy who left her. Just as her morass is coming to an end, Tamsir comes up to her and says he wants to marry her. The crude idea hurts Ramatalai a lot, so he scolds him in front of Mado and the imam. Dada Dieng later asks her to marry him. Ramatalai also turns him down, but he does it with a lot more grace than Tamsir. She decides to put all of her efforts into raising her kids. For Ramatalai, the forces of modernity are making her teenage children more vulnerable to a lot of new risks, which she thinks she needs to protect them from. Two of Ramatalai's sons are hurt when a motorbike goes off while they are playing baseball in the street. Three of her children are caught smoking. Asatu's doppelganger gets pregnant without being married. All of these situations are handled by Ramatalai with power, calm, and poise. At the end of her long message, Ramatalai looks forward to Isatu's return to Senegal. 
She's excited to see her friend and believes that their friendship will be strong as ever, even though they've gone through some physical changes. About the author. Mariama Ba was born in 1929 in Dakar, Senegal, which was part of French West Africa at the time. She was raised as a Muslim and went to Quranic school from a very young age. During the time that France was a colony, her father was Minister of Health. After freedom, he was one of the first ministers of state. Ba's mother died when she was young, so her grandparents raised her most of the time. She went to college against their wishes and studied law there. After she graduated, she became a teacher. Ba was a strong woman who took part in politics. In the years before and after Senegal got its freedom, she wrote essays against French policies that tried to integrate French-speaking people. She also joined a number of groups that fought for women's rights and wrote newspaper stories about education, female genital mutilation, and how women were treated unfairly in Senegalese society. She raised her nine kids mostly by herself after she and her husband got divorced. The first book she wrote was So Long a Letter, 1979. It was written in French and was praised as a work of literature as soon as it came out. The book won the first ever Noma Award for publishing in Africa in 1981. It was also one of the first books written by an African woman to be read all over the world. Her second book, A Scarlet Song, 1981, came out after she had died. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.